Having recently bought a solar light that I really, really like, I thought, I'll waterproof this before I put it out so it lasts longer. And then I thought, well, while I'm waterproofing it, I should be showing you guys what I do to actually make things like this last a lot longer. So one of the most important things to do is to waterproof the circuit board here. And there's a couple of ways of doing that. You can smear it liberally with Vaseline or some more plastic safe grease, or you can use nail varnish. In this instance, I've used nail varnish. And because this particular one has surface mount LEDs, I've just put them the nail varnish over the top of them. The main things to note when you're doing this are when you've got LEDs like this or uh, little tiny chips like that, if I show you this, I recommend the little four pin chips, for instance, I recommend putting a good dollop of the nail varnish over the leads so it surrounds them completely because wherever you've got connections that are close together, that's when you get corrosion problems. And likewise with the LEDs, putting a blob of the nail varnish here so it wicks up these leads will actually protect against that corrosion. It will just make things last a lot longer. The nail varnish I use is just generally any nail varnish you can get. In this case, clear is better because uh, there are some LEDs directly mounted on this board. So in this case, I've completely covered this board in the nail varnish. And to do that, I tipped a little bit out and then I used the brush to basically just spread that over and make sure it was around all the connections and in amongst all the pins of the chip. On the back, I put a blob on the back of the LED here. And it's also a good idea to put a good blob round where they go onto the PCB itself. And this little inductor here, uh, it's a good idea perhaps to put a blob there as well, just to basically minimize the area where water can actually cause current to track across because that's what causes corrosion. I've also removed the switch completely from this light. Here's the switch. It's mainly included for uh, isolating the battery during transportation. You can either remove it or just blob it out. You'll see that of the three connections, there's usually just two connected. And if you just flow some solder onto those, you can bridge them across or put a wire link in if you wish. The solar panel itself is tricky. Someone recently suggested that with a bit of change in design, they could have mounted the solar panel underneath the plastic. That would have been good. In this case, it's been glued in with that sort of grey glue and water will seep in around the side of the solar panel and when it wicks underneath, it will cause corrosion between adjacent connections and also it may actually flow through into the unit down here. So I have filled it with a bit more hot melt glue and... Uh, the, there's still the issue that, you know, if this fills up with the water, it will gradually cause corrosion, but at least this, those connections are quite far apart. However, the next thing, and this is quite an important one, is the battery. Don't hold back the battery because these contacts will almost certainly corrode. And the best way to stop them corroding is to get Vaseline or a grease or grease of your choice and absolutely smear it all over them, really get it into them. Uh, and also on the end of the battery themselves. And what that does is it excludes the water from actually causing corrosion there. It also excludes oxygen, which is good, which uh, is a major factor in that sort of like the rusting of these connections because these are often steel. And that's basically it. Um, by waterproofing your lights when you get them from new, you can make them last a considerable amount of time longer than they would otherwise have lasted. It's really worth doing.